Well, it's not just us humans who have best friends. Plants have them, too, from helping each other defend against insects or diseases to improving the soil they share. Jackie Bantle knows a lot about those companion plants. She is the Greenhouse and Horticultural Facility Manager at the U of S. Jackie will host a free online class tonight about BFFs in the garden and companion planting. But first, she joins us in studio to share some of those tips ahead of today's event. Good morning, Jackie. Morning, Stephanie. Okay, so why do some plants grow better together than others? Oh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> why do some people like other people better than others? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if science has actually figured that out, but it just we mm. just notice that, that sometimes plants do better, yeah, next to each other. Some plants actually will um, give off some chemicals. Uh, it's been shown in the past that other plants don't like. So mm-hmm. like, for example, walnut trees will do that. Uh, the roots of walnut trees might do that. Oh. Yeah, so... But yeah, it's it's kind of interesting how that happens. Those are yeah. like the introverted plants that are like, no, <laughs> That's I need right. my own space. <laughs> I get that. <Yeah. laughs> how can growing specific plants, I guess, help other plants fight against insects or diseases? Well, in some cases, so for example, um, lots of people have heard about marigolds, right? And you have this marigold, the marigolds tend to repel some insects. And I don't know if it's the scent of the marigolds or something, but Mm -hmm. if you surround, uh, put marigolds in your garden or surround other plants with marigolds, the insects tend to stay away. So that happens. Um, Another Uh, thing is that uh, if you have problems with, um, well, and I'm not sure because I haven't tested this thoroughly yet, (laughs) but um, if you put mint or peppermint or something like that amongst your cabbage and broccoli plants, it's supposed to repel uh, the cabbage butterflies. Oh. Yeah, which is uh, obviously a big problem in Saskatchewan. We have those because of all our canola crops. Mm. But yeah, so... um, that's how it works. So somehow the plants give off something, some kind of scent. Uh, garlic plants are supposed to repel in certain insects as well, so intersperse them in your garden, and that's supposed to help. Okay. Now, I mean, some people might be familiar with the three sisters, corn, right. beans, and squash. Right. Why do those three grow so well together? Well, what happens is corn loves to have uh, a lot of nitrogen. Beans are part of the legume family, mm-hmm. and legume crops actually fix nitrogen from the environment. So if you plant beans next to corn, it's grabbing nitrogen out of the air and then putting it in the soil for the corn. Uh, the beans are. And then you put the squash in between, and that will grow in between the corn and the beans and helps to keep the weeds down. Oh. And the, the beans also, um, they suggest you grow pole beans, and so they actually climb up the corn and that's how they uh, get light because otherwise oh, cool. if you just had little bean plants they'd be shaded out. Yeah. yeah. So that how it, that's how it works together. Okay. What are other examples I guess and benefits of companion planting? Um so some of the other things you can do uh so for example you can take advantage of things that mature earlier compared to others. So if you have a, a small space in your garden Maybe um, you can put your spinach in, and spinach is quite f- fast growing, and you can harvest it within, you know, four weeks, five mm-hmm. weeks or so. And you could put that really close to something like, well, for example, corn or, or broccoli. And so by the time you sp- harvest your spinach, the other crops are getting bigger, and they'll just take over the space. So you take full advantage of the space. Same thing with um, root crops. So you can put, you know, radishes next to, which again is an early uh, maturing crop next to say carrots and by the time the carrots are full size the radishes are long gone mm-hmm. so that's companion planting to save space oh hey what about cover crops what are those so cover crops are um it's kind of new to saskatchewan but they've been using them down in ontario a lot and i think it's because they have a longer season but the idea is that you put this crop in and you never actually are going to harvest it or eat it oh. um, you're just going to work it back into the soil so it's actually rejuvenating the soil so for example um if i decided well let's say i grew a whole garden of spinach and that's all I'm growing in my garden. So mm-hmm. the spinach is done after, you know, six weeks or eight weeks. And so then I put in maybe something like a winter wheat crop, 
which isn't, I don't want it to form wheat or grow, but you're just making this green space and then you work it into the soil. So now you're increasing your organic matter um, and, and bringing more organic matter is always great in the soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's things like they use deep root radishes. So if you have a hard pan, sometimes uh, you can put in these deep root radishes, not the radishes that we eat, but the ones that grow really long. And not meant to eat, but they break up the hard pan as they're growing down. Oh. And then you just work them up again. Um, buckwheat is another one. We don't grow buckwheat here because our season really isn't long enough. But we could grow it if we're just using it as a cover crop. Right. And it will actually free up calcium in the soil. Interesting. So, yeah. So, there's, so the cover crops, like I said, you don't... The plan isn't to eat them or harvest them. It's just to work them back into the soil. What about some examples of, you know, veggies or flowers or even herbs that do not grow well together? Um, that is a good question. Gee. So things that are competing um, for, uh, for uh, the same kind of thing. So, for example... Mm -hmm. Corn and potatoes, they both like high nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So if you put them side by side, neither one's going to do really well because they're try both trying to get this nitrogen. So um, other things too, if you grow a lot of crops that are very similar, so let's say you put broccoli next to cabbage, next to cauliflower in a big block, um, those all like the same kind of insects and diseases. So now you've got this big block of plants and the insects and diseases will be um, attracted to that. Right. So basically what you want to try to do is avoid monocultures, so things that are very similar or the same. So, for example, our lawns, okay? Um, we just have uh, just straight grass in our lawns, and it's it's difficult to... Um, to keep the diseases and insects as you have this big plate of uh, thing, something that is the same mm -hmm. and the insects can see it and they love it. Right. Appetizing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What about people like myself who maybe already planted a few things and might be thinking, oopsies, can you still <laughs> use and apply some of these tips now? Oh, for sure. I mean, you can always, uh, you know, put in a few, you can always fit in a few um marigolds or some garlic or something like if you still want to throw a few things in the other thing is um like don't panic <laughs> you know uh in our small gardens things are pretty close anyway so do what you can and think about it for next year you know always plan for next year but um yeah just trying to uh what should i say you know, you might have to watch extra for right. extra diseases and insects. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or in my case with my rosemary, I might have to cut it back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't take over my herb garden. Yeah. Good, good point. <laughs> yeah. If you planted your mint in your herb garden, <laughs> the mint goes crazy. So, yeah, you might have to just cut it back. Cut it back. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's still hope. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. There's always hope. Yeah. All right, Jackie, thank you so much for those wonderful tips. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Stephanie.